Hello cycle car folks. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a video, so um, I figured I would do one. Uh, particularly since I am redesigning uh, the drive system for the Vulture yet again for the third time. Because every time I redesign one, I bring it to Elmhurst and it breaks and I gotta do it again. Which is why, <laughs> which is why I guess I never get to any events. Because I'm, I'm always working on my cart. But anyway, um, this is the Vulture, as you can see, and it is propped up in my garage, my new garage, some hockey jerseys there. Uh, my new garage out in the burbs of Canada, of Ontario. And um, <clears throat> so I thought I'd take you through the drive system redesign. Uh, if you remember... If you've seen my other videos, you know that I started off with a belt drive and that almost worked, uh, but it skipped. And so the belt skipped. So I changed it to a shaft drive, which you probably saw from the Elmhurst video where I'm spraying it with grease and it's smoking and it's all very dramatic, uh, but <laughs> not reliable and therefore not fast because if you don't have a reliable car you can't really uh, drive it quickly for a very long time and that means at Elmhurst you lose <laughs> so <clears throat> here I am redesigning it now Dave Wells and myself uh, Dave is a, uh, a very um, smart and diligent local cycle car guy and we designed kind of a system that's sort of a halfway between um, a subframe and a completely independent rear suspension. So the problem, well, it's not a problem. It's kind of a cool feature. My cycle car, the Vulture, as you can see it right here, has a rear suspension. This thing is a like an A-arm. I'll get it from the back here. It's an A-arm. You can see, I'll do my little finger thing here. See this? That arm goes to the goes to the edge of the cockpit where it's bolted in right there. Okay, and that comes back here. And likewise, this side does the same thing. There's the finger thing. There it is. It's bolted right there to the right in front of the cockpit to a big uh basically a like a threaded rod, a big thick threaded rod. And so this bit here moves up and down. That's where the rear uh, wheel goes. That's the rear axle, okay? Right now I've got a screwdriver in my uh, brake disc because I'm kind of working on a few things at once. So this bit here goes up and down. And this is the frame and it stays stationary. That's the bit I sit on, that's what the seat is on, and this is the rear suspension. It goes up and down. So of course the problem when you have a motor mounted to the frame and the rear suspension goes up and down is obviously the chain can't really deal with the range of motion. So it comes off and obviously when your chain comes off, you're done. So the trick has been how do you let the rear suspension move both sort of, it'll move this way, but it'll also do this, right? Because it's not perfectly stiff. How do you get that to happen and still keep the chain on? And now we're on the third idea, which is kind of a half subframe. Basically what we've done here is we've created a platform for the engine. This is the platform right there, okay? These two things make the rigid bits of the platform and this is a sort of a under, under material to keep it from twisting like this. And these two uh, sort of rectangular tubings come up to here and they come to that, uh, to this piece of square tubing here. Sorry, my camera work is not amazing. And then that goes up to this tower here, okay? It's attached, the whole subframe, it's like an L-shaped subframe and it's attached to the rear axle by these two um, pillow block bearings it took me a second for vocabulary and so what ends up happening is when the when the uh, 
rear subframe moves up and down. See if I can get it to do this with one hand. I'm working with one hand. If it moves up and down, you can see the whole motor will move up and down because this whole platform moves with the axle. So it's kind of suspended. It's kind of holding the axle like this. And so when the rear axle moves up and down or sideways, the whole platform moves and the whole engine moves. But it's not really a subframe because back here, I haven't installed this yet, but back here, there's going to be a pivot, actually right there, there's going to be a pivot point with a, where is it, here, with like a rubber um, support, like a rubber mount that's going to go, let me get right down here. That's going to go, this is the frame, like the stationary frame. And the rubber mount is going to go between, like in this space. That's where the rubber mount's going to be. So while the whole platform is going to move, the back of it will be resting on the body. So the engine isn't really all, it isn't really all, unsprung weight it's kind of half because imagine you're sort of you're pivoting the engine like this see how the whole thing pivots when i move it because it's all pivoting around the rear axle so it'll be stationary back here mounted and the front will pivot and move side to side so it's kind of the difference between picking up the whole engine and just lifting the front of it so you're kind of half unsprung weight and half sprung and so now you're probably asking, why do you have this? What, what's, what's, the, uh, what's the jack shaft for? Well, first of all, if you go straight from the torque converter to the rear axle, like many cycle carts do, <clears throat> you really only have room for about, I think at most you could get a, I don't even know if there's available, a hundred tooth uh, sprocket, like a sprocket like this. Uh, I think the biggest one I've ever seen is 72, <laughs> excuse me, which means you get only a one to 72 or sorry, a one to seven ratio or reduction ratio, gear ratio. And many people go with that. But last year at Elmhurst, I had a 12 to one ratio. And the thing is with cycle carts, they have big wheels and they use the torque converter and not a um, not a uh, centrifugal clutch. So the gear reduction could stand to be a bit higher, particularly for an engine like this that's kind of set up to rev. This is a go-kart racing engine. I found that when I, and in fact, I tested it with a much higher ratio, much higher, with a 15 to 1 ratio. And it was great because it would start accelerating and it just kept right on accelerating all the way through the rev range. Like I ran out of road. I tested it out here on my, on my road. I just didn't have enough road to keep going any quicker. So I had to slow down. Um, but basically the higher gear reduction is nice because you get your engine into a really nice rev range. So that's the reason I have the jack shaft because I'm gonna go from the torque converter here Sorry, I got a bunch of stuff in the way here. I probably should have prepared a little better. I got the torque converter here, and the chain for that is kind of hanging loose right now. I'm going to put a new chain on it. But that goes from here to here. So there's going to be a chain going around like that. Okay? And obviously that is going to spin this axle, and that's going to come over here, and there's going to be a chain going around like that. So this is a 10 to, I think this is 56, 60. 10 to 60, so 6 to 1. And then this is a 20 to 42. So you're into like a uh, multiplied by another 3. So, you know, that gives you the reduction. I think this setup is exactly what I had at Elmhurst. So that'll be a 12 point something to 1. And I can even put a bigger sprocket on this. I have a lot of this stuff laying around now. Like, for instance, I can put this 70 on right there and that just barely fits does it i don't even know if i tested it but does it barely fit oh barely look at that look at that clearance not much to spare there 
Um, so I could even have really a much higher uh, reduction ratio if I wanted it. And so that'll be the subject of experiments later on. Um, but that's basically it. This is our kind of half, uh, half platform, half subframe kind of thing we're doing here. So in future posts, I hope to show you how it works. Got a little bit of work to do on it. Uh, so once it's done, you can see it. Alrighty. Uh, looking forward to Elmhurst. Uh, email me if you want to look in the comments uh, below. Email me if you want to get involved in the Elmhurst Grand Prix. Or if you want to be on my newsletter, just because you think it's cool. Uh, send me an email. Alrighty. Talk to you later.